Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything you have to experience and the stories you need to hear right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and it was way back in 1528 when Europeans first landed on Galveston Island. Of course, it wasn't called Galveston until 1786, but with such a long history, it's easy to find stories dedicated to the Lone Star State here. And that includes the tale of a Victorian-style house that happens to be the finest in our fair land. When heading down to the Gulf Coast, it's easy to set your sights on the sand and surf of Galveston Island. And as you make your way down Broadway, the final stretch before you hit the beach, you might notice something that seems sort of out of place when it comes to the fun and the sun feeling you find around here. That's because a massive mansion built before the great storm of 1900 tends to stick out. In the last 50 or so years, Galveston has been promoting beaches, beach, beach, come here to the beach, we have beaches. But you know, the town started out as a, a port community, so instead of beach, it was Bayside. Denise Alexander is the chief of museums for the Galveston Historical Foundation, and she took us on a tour of this one-of-a-kind building known as Bishop's Palace. It almost feels like Disney World. It's too perfect. It's like... <laughs> we get that a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little girls think it's a castle. They want to know where, you know, the frozen girls are. Yeah. <laughs> Finished in 1892, after five years of construction, this 20,000 square foot mansion cost $250,000 to build all those years ago. Today, that's around 6.9 million. Everywhere you look. I mean, they spared no expense. No, there was no expense spared. Colonel Walter Gresham, founder of the Gulf, Colorado and Santa Fe Railroad, called this place home with his wife Josephine and their nine children. Designed by Galveston's premier architect at the time, Nicholas Clayton, the home was occupied until 1920, when Gresham passed away. Three years later, it was sold to the Catholic Church for $37,000 and used as a residence for the Bishop of Galveston. By the 60s, no one was living there, so it turned into a museum run by the church. The wonderful thing about the Catholic Church owning the house was that they didn't do anything to it. So, you know, we don't have air conditioning, we just have window units and fans, and nothing was monkeyed up. They didn't take out the fireplaces, so pretty much everything in the house is original. Some of the light fixtures have been changed, but um, not that many. And I think that's what draws people to it, is that it is so authentic. You don't have to like pick and choose something. Oh, that's real, that's not real, that wasn't here. Everything was here. We are now standing in the rotunda of the Bishop's Palace and wow. it's about 55 feet um, up in the air, which is really cool. And this is one of the spots in the house that when people walk in, it literally makes their mouths drop open. Truly. So we have all these wonderful stained glass in here. Truly the point of the tour where I expect the lights to go out and the paintings to get longer and a voice to come <laughs> it off. Does. It, it is, it is that, <laughs> it is that. While this isn't an amusement ride, the sheer detail in the mansion will amaze you. Mr. Gresham had the ability to have um, the finest materials brought in with his contacts in uh, the railroad. So they had the ability to have the finest things brought. Even the chapel that was put in by the church has some of the finest fixings, including hand-painted stained glass from Germany. So the chapel um, was put in in the 1920s when Bishop Byrne moved into the house as a place for, I believe, services for him and for special guests. It is deconsecrated for any visitors, so it's actually not a functioning chapel anymore and hasn't been for quite some time, but um, it's a unique part of the story of the house. So we want to tell the entire story of the house from the family to the bishop, and so we decided to keep that room as is. Surprisingly, you won't find any hidden hideaways or bookshelves that lead to other rooms or talking dogs for that matter. But the home holds its own. I'm always looking for a door that we've never seen, a secret passageway, a tunnel. No, everything, what you see is what you get here. And which gets pretty good. Yeah, which is fabulous. There is no doubt. It is fabulous. Exploring this one-of-a-kind castle on the island is a unique experience because it truly feels as if you're time traveling through someone's home taking a trip into Texas history. There are no ropes, there's no guided tours. You can see the house when you want to see it at your own pace, your own time. I think if somebody wants to experience what it's like in 1892 Galveston and feel a little bit different than they did when they came in, want to feel awe and grandeur and what it would be like to live in another time, this is definitely the place to come. <laughs> 